Welcome to Making Room, a podcast inspiring people to accelerate change by being a catalyst, honoring creativity, and acting with courage. We are making room for the greatest potential of our community. to Making Room. We are so excited for today's conversation where we bring back Nate Sally from Audible Coaching and Consulting. And Nate is an executive coach, so I might call it leadership coaching, but he's got an amazing approach to really aligning people with their purpose and values. And we thought, why wouldn't we just, uh, in, a, in our own journey of growth and seeing what our potential is, have a live coaching session with him? So today we're gonna pick right up where we're, he's sharing a little bit more about his approach and how he does things, and then we go right into where he's having a live coaching session with our team. And just want to invite you to really kind of participate as you listen and you're hearing from us and me around things we're grappling with and how might it be of service to you as you align further to what you care about and your leadership. So we're excited, and we'll let uh, Nate take it away right here. When you think about coaching, there are different uh, you know, types of coaching, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes people need a health and wellness coach or somebody needs a real mm -hmm. estate coach, right? Or whatever the case may be, a financial coach. Mm -hmm. um, for me, I take a very, uh, like a holistic approach, I, I would say. And we look at all domains of your life. Um, we look at your personal, we look at your family. Uh, we look at it from a professional standpoint. We look at it from a community standpoint, what things you're looking to do and how you're looking to serve and make a difference because that plays a huge part into how fulfilled you feel in your everyday life and mm -hmm. in, in our everyday you know, purpose in life. Um, so we look at the, the big picture and we have you know, X's and O's type conversations mm -hmm. as right. well, but we're not just looking at that. We're looking at the human being. And I'm a firm believer that if there's a, a more fulfilled employee in your workplace, they're going to bring more to the table. They're going to be more efficient when they show up because they feel more valued as a human being, first and foremost. So that's, mm -hmm. the, that's the thing that mm -hmm. I strive to bring to the table that may be a little different from other um, executive coaches who are kind of focusing on the metrics and right. making sure we hit this goal. I tell people when I come in, hey, I'm not going to promise you that you're going to make a billion dollars because you're working <laughs> right. with me, but I can promise you that your individuals will feel more fulfilled and understand their value when they walk, when they step foot in this door. Mm -hmm. And that typically turns out to work out well for everyone involved when it's done the right way. That's great. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes in the work that, that I've done around it and continue to do it, it is, it could be about possibility. Mm -hmm. Right. And I love what you said, because I, I've had conversations where, Nate's done some coaching with me, and most recently, um, I'm going to be leaving for a trip to Paris tomorrow, and I almost canceled the trip, and I'm going to a writing workshop, and I called Nate because I wasn't necessarily fed up, but I was grappling. Mm -hmm. I was kind of stuck, mm -hmm. and part of me was, what happens if I go? What if I get literally stuck over there? Is this the right time? You know, it's, it's costly. And I was beginning to g lean towards not going. And I kind of called Nate thinking he would just agree with me. <laughs> <laughs> Hoping. And, and, uh, yeah, yeah, no, he's just going to reaffirm that. And he goes, hey, let's, yeah. let's talk about that. I was like, all right. <laughs> and, uh, but what he helped me see was, one, there was some fear and that I didn't know how it would turn out. It was very new for me. It's a new course. Mm -hmm. And I told a friend earlier, you asked me like one of the best questions anyone's ever asked mm -hmm. for a tough decision. He said, what decision have you made similar to this in the past mm -hmm. and how did it go? Mm -hmm. And it occurred to me that a similar big decision was when I decided to climb Kilimanjaro. Mm -hmm. But same thing, I said I was going I told them I wasn't going, and then three weeks I said I was going. Mm -hmm. And it turned out to be one of the most transformative trips of my life. Mm -hmm. So we talked through those similar, I'll call my stuff, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. in the coaching world of, you know, fears, can't control it. Mm -hmm. All of that was coming up to say, well, let me gravitate to certainty. And I think mm -hmm. 
great development and really great coaches and what you've done for me and many others is you take people, you walk side by side with them Mm -hmm. through uncertainty, Mm -hmm. but the uncertain path should honor their values and their outcomes. Mm -hmm. And you did that, so I appreciate that because I'll be flying out tomorrow. Oh, man. (laughs) (laughs) That's awesome. That's That's awesome. That's great. So if we get some of this, Shivani, I get some executive coaching. Yeah. Can we go to Paris? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Climb Mount Kilimanjaro. You live a different life than I live. Yeah, I'm going to a meeting tomorrow. I don't know about you, Brendan. Yeah, yeah. i got to pick up the T-Lex. And <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's good. That's awesome. No, that's, that's, good. that's awesome. It's, and it's one of those things, honestly, when it comes to coaching, and John does a lot of the same things with me, you know. Right. And it's not even intentional. It's just if I bring something to his attention, it's certain questions that just come to mind. And, uh, and, and honestly, all the, the best coaches that I know, it's just a part of who they are, mm-hmm. right? It's not like they're trying to be this coach or, hey, buddy, let me come coach you. Like, right. it's just if you say something, there's a trigger that goes out there, I got to ask this question. Or I got to and, – and a lot of people – and I was this way before you got trained in coaching – I was this way probably too. You, you're, you're, you're hearing, but you're not really listening, right? Mm-hmm. And a lot of us are, are, are hardly ever like really listened to, right? Mm-hmm. And I think, especially when we think about being an executive, like people, you know, may obey or may li- you know listen right. because they have to, but like actually listening, and listening to try and be a support system and trying to serve you as opposed to listening to try and get something out of you, right? So I think that that's a huge piece and a part of it as well is like the the real coaches out there. The ones who are like really passionate and doing it for the right reasons, they're doing it because it's kind of who they are anyway. Right. Like mm-hmm. John has probably always been that coach type of person, you know, <laughs> I, and I know I've always been that way. Where guys, and I always used to wonder, like, why does everybody just feel like feel comfortable bringing their stuff to me? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and right. I just, I never, I was never, uh, I guess, disciplined enough or had the structure as far as how to like help them in this way yeah. now. I thought I was helping them and maybe encouraging them and uplifting them and saying nice things, which I, I truly meant. But now like having a structure behind how to do that, how to ask certain questions, how to walk someone down that path, you know, we all have patterns uh, along our journey, right? right? A lot of the times, you know, once you get past 25, 30 years old, you probably you really, you know, go through something for the first time, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it's like I had mm. something that's similar to this in my past that I can lean back on and understand how I need to operate and how I need to function uh, in this scenario. So uh, that's that's just what happened there. And that's my buddy. So I want to be able to help and support mm. anywhere I can. And I know he was uh, grappling with that that decision. <laughs> yeah. It was. It was a tough one. And you, you all have done it to me. I think there's the practice quote of it. And then there's like just listening and being there and knowing someone's best and and I'm sure you all, we've all had, we talked about it. I know, Shivani, you're in a new, really awesome leadership experience. And mm. Brandon, you've done all kinds of things. So we're going to turn it over to Nate here in a, in a few minutes here. But uh, before we do, I'd, I'd love to hear from you all, like, this idea of growth and development. Like, what has been some of your biggest growth, you know, what, like, occurrences in your career where you whether you were in a program or did something, because it, you know, it can be a variety of ways where you get a chance to learn about your, yourself and your leadership. Yeah, so I, I think the, the most impactful, whether it's executive coaching or just kind of leadership training, whatever it is, I think the most impactful for me have been being mindful of the things in my blind spots mm-hmm. and things I don't know. And what I call it, I told you, I, the one program that's actualized leadership, um, guy Will Sparks in Charlotte does it, mm-hmm. is what are, your, what are your leadership shadows? So like, what is the wake that you're leaving behind you? Mm-hmm. And I don't think people always see that. And so you're very successful, but you have a path of body, like, mm-hmm. I don't mean to be gory, but you have a path of destruction behind you mm-hmm. because you're not cognizant of what you're doing to reach that success. And so one of the things that, you know, you go through this assessment, and my leadership style is very much focused on relationships, and I'm more focused on relationships than the actual outcome, mm-hmm. but that can lead to not making tough decisions, mm-hmm. being indecisive, not wanting to hurt people's feelings, right? Mm-hmm. Um, that can also lead to you maybe you being more emotional when things, when people don't include you in things, and so you have to be cognizant of that, and then moving towards being making courageous decisions, but still respecting people for... Mm-hmm. I know this decision, Shivani, is going to be bad for you. I respect that, but this is why we have to make this decision, um, right? And so I thought that was that mm. was really good. And it goes back to the informal coaching session you gave me where I talked about with uh, Kirby, my wife, which was you were saying, like, all the stuff that you admired that I did in the community, 
And she said, well, that's detracting from stuff that we need mm. you here. Yeah. And so calibrating that and realizing, okay, I'm doing this stuff, but I, what, what am I leaving behind me? What am I not seeing? Mm. And I think that's been very impactful mm. for me. Mm. Yeah, so um, I actually get to hear that uh, mini session on actualized leadership next week. Oh, nice. Okay. Okay. nice. Position you see what, see what, uh, yeah, what your leadership style exactly. is. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. No, I filled out my survey. I'm very excited and interested <laughs> to see the results. But, uh, you know, I, I was struggling a lot with being really excited about various projects and kind of taking on roles, mm. leading different things within the hospital system and within pediatrics and in the community and realizing that um, in order to be more effective, I can have the passion and I can have those principles in place, but without some kind of tangible skills of really knowing myself and knowing, you know, what are my strengths? What are my weaknesses? Mm -hmm. And not necessarily having to fix every weakness, but knowing how to kind of foster the program or foster an, in an intervention or whatever it is with people who can kind of make up for those weaknesses um, on my team and being able to lead charges so that it doesn't feel like it's a, a struggle all the time to just try to find people who are um, agreeing or in an alignment with the, the things that I feel passionate about. Um, so I, I joined this leadership institute um, as a partnership with Atrium and Queens University to just see, like, okay, let, let me see how I can build some of those skills on my own, mm -hmm. but also thinking about how I engage other people and working kind of within a system um, and not against anything, right? So just right. being able to kind of work together and move forward um, and allow other people to see what I am passionate about and, and feel those same things and mm. jump on board, right? Yeah. Mm. And mm. so I'm excited about what the outcomes of that will be because um, I am, I, I've been told many a time that I'm doing too much um, or I'm passionate <laughs> about too much. And I, I don't know anything about I that. <laughs> find a focus yeah. and say like, okay, you know, if you're interested in this, you gotta, you gotta go all in on that one thing and not try to be everywhere. But mm. I have a really hard time doing that. Yeah. Mm. Mm. I think that's a hard thing too. I, I find similarly is we, when we've talked about, you know, when you have a caring, empathetic heart, because they're like one of my hardest leadership lessons was my first ever coach mm -hmm. when I was 29 mm -hmm. uh, called me Zorro because mm. he said, I'm always trying to go help mm. and save. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> and, and I didn't like that at all. I didn't like hearing that. <laughs> yeah. And um, so there is sometimes where I, I love what you said, the word calibrate. Mm -hmm. Like for me, it's that ongoing journey of, yeah, there's times I still fall into pleasing and catering and but sometimes it can show up as very welcoming mm -hmm. right so right. I think there's this as you get old as I get older you start to learn for me when I'm sensing and truly being mm. m like welcoming versus when am I actually compromising my spirit and my own values right. like am I eating this extra helping of food when I know you know it's it's not going to feel well just because I want to make that person happy, that that's not <laughs> effective, yeah, right? Right. right? But you know, we've I, all been I, there. We all do that, <laughs> right? I've done that. Uh, yeah. Well, and sometimes intentionally, yeah, I'm going to be really full tonight. But I, I think you could <laughs> apply that everywhere. Is like I, I think too, it is. I struggle with that too, of of the focus. Um, and I think when you start to learn, when you have your own container and good people around you too, that mm -hmm. you know can help you, like Kirby did, to, to yeah. calibrate. Right. Yeah. And then when I think about calibrate, I think about a, a word that we often use is, is balance, right? Mm -hmm. And um, and balance can be tricky, and I like to use the rhythm instead, right? Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times in our lives, like, usually mm -hmm. something's out of balance, right? Something yeah. We're sacrificing mm -hmm. something to accomplish the next thing. So a lot of times, what's your best operating rhythm, you know, for you, for your family, right? And uh, the understanding and communication that you all have, I think, is big. And then when we talk about just coaching in general, another big thing that, that came to mind, um, as we're all talking about different things we're working through and things of that nature, clarity is probably the, the biggest thing when it comes to coaching. You know, whatever that area is that you're struggling with, whatever it is that you're, you're, you're fighting to overcome, like clarity is is a huge piece. You know, when you're with a coach, you'll walk away from that situation clear on on what steps you need to take to overcome this this obstacle, right? What steps you need to, to take to become the best version of yourself? What steps you need to begin taking to begin bridging that gap um, that we discussed earlier? So I think that's a huge piece and something that I know a lot of us 
you know, uh, are in, in, in search for, right? And we desire to have is just clarity because a lot of times if we know better, we'll do better. It doesn't always happen, but, yeah. you know, that's, the, that's, that's half the battle right there. If I clearly know what I should do, I'm more likely to do it. Yeah. Hmm. I love, I know you, you want to move on, but I, I, the, the <laughs> rhythm yeah, versus done. balance, though, that is a great mm. point. Because everybody searches for work-life balance, and the truth is, Mm -mm. at the same time, you may not, they might not balance, but you go through periods of really intense work or whatever you do Mm -hmm. professionally, um, and then to, uh, like, whatever whatever it is to take care of yourself, lifestyle, Mm -hmm. where that's neglected for a while, but then it kind of, you find this rhythm that Mm -hmm. you're going through this cycle, and then you'll be back to, you know, having a a place where you can take a breath. So I really like that. Definitely. One of my mentors um, had told me one time, like, you can be the best doctor you can be the best mother you can be the best wife but you can't be all of them at the same mm, time that's right like mm. not on all on one day <laughs> yeah. that's right yeah, mm. yeah love it. i love, love it. that mm. rhythm and balance and 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 i've got a lot of rhythm with music and we dance know that. So. we know that we've seen it we <laughs> that's good I, i'm a witness <laughs> 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 well, Nate, we're going to turn it over to you, you know, just see what uh, take us away. Yeah, I just wanted to, you know, kick things off with a quick question. And most, you know, coaching sessions when you come in, it's all about the client, right, and what oh, they yeah. want. But we're a little different in here, right? So <laughs> I just want to ask a quick question and see if there's anyone that wants to share maybe an area of life where you have a, a gap between where it is that you are right now and where you know you're capable of being. And maybe you've been, you know, fighting through trying to overcome a barrier, a wall, or a hurdle um, that you haven't been able to. Draw straws. Yeah, I know we all have something. It doesn't matter what we, what we want to share. <laughs> I thought you were gonna lead it first. <laughs> <laughs> no. All right, I'll 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 start here. Um, you know, I think it is. I I just had this lesson this week again, mm. uh, and Chavani said it around focus, mm. where. It's when something comes up that I feel like is important. Mm. And we were we were making a video, you know, about our welcome, you know, launch event. Mm. Yet I had two or three podcasts to review and all of a sudden I'm just completely caught up in this other task. And I feel like that's something where my default sometimes is to say yes of like, oh yeah, I can knock that out. Mm -hmm. And I know there's some of that old athlete in me Mm -hmm. where the answer is yes. And then you go grind it out. Mm -hmm. And I'm learning as I get older, there's a real cost to that. Mm -hmm. And I feel like sometimes I'm getting better, but I will say candidly that working on my own a lot is hard. And I don't necessarily always have that accountability structure where waking up to have those moments to journal, to be still, to walk my dog. That's like the first thing, like I skip and then I get into the day and then I'm just, I'm going. So I think it's, it's, it is a process and that's something I, I still continue to like, when do you say yes to something? Mm -hmm. And when am I, when am I, I I think I make sometimes some emotional decisions. Mm. They would say no, but <laughs> <laughs> I, I know I make I make that because I am just naturally wired as an emotional person. But I, a, a good friend once said that you you can't always bring emotion into business, mm. right? And in your life, right? Because mm-hmm. you know. If, so anyway, that's where I would say is the momentum to know around discernment, mm. discernment, mm. and when you're building a business, I will say when we're building this, like there's so many opportunities and things you could be doing. Mm. So it's part discernment, part surrendering. Mm. I'm really, I'm really focused on that and I'm struggling sometimes with it. It works, but I'm learning lessons the hard way. So Mm. I guess momentum around surrender and discernment. Mm. So if, if you were to do well in this area and improve Mm. in this area, what, what would be the ideal outcome? Yeah. Yeah, it's a good question. I think it's pacing Mm -hmm. as we're talking through this, is Mm -hmm. learning to pace or learning to say, hey, that newsletter, I think it's thinking through things more broadly. Mm -hmm. Like I tend to say, oh, yeah, I'll get it. We'll just knock that out. Mm -hmm. And it produces a lot of good results. You know, Mm -hmm. my business coach said, you've produced a lot of stuff. (laughs) (laughs) But my job in life is not to be 
all about producing. Mm. You know, I want to live, mm. right? And I want to enjoy. And I don't, kicking off this newsletter or doing this video before going away would create, a, for me, some anxiety of what's happening. I'm not there to monitor. Like, it just, it's not set up well. Mm -hmm. So I think the, in the ideal state, it's understanding how to pace things better mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. when to say, we will do that, not this week, but in two weeks. Mm -hmm. Or putting that on the shelf. Mm -hmm. On a scale of one to ten, I guess, how important is it to you that you overcome this thing that you're battling with and, and, and be able to reach that ideal state that you just mentioned? Mm. My first reaction is it's pretty important. So mm -hmm. it put it seven, eight. I sure. mean, it's not like the pressing thing. It's just something I've continued to sort of, you know, I'm on a journey with, I would say. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then at what point, I guess, along your journey have – you feel like you've done well in this area. Like, where have you had, we spoke about rhythm and balance. Where have mm. you had a rhythm where you felt like, man, things are flowing, uh, I'm not doing a lot of stuff that's, you know, not in my comfort zone or not within, you know, my core values and what I desire to do. Um, I guess, when have you felt like that and felt like you've been in a good rhythm and, and had that going in your life? <laughs> it's a great question. I really would point everything back to sleep. Mm. And that when I haven't slept well, I'm tired, and then that's when like I just I'm 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 off a little bit, mm. and so when I've committed to those habits, like I've been look I've been restudying a lot around habits, not goals, mm. right? Because like you know James Clear at Atomic Habits will say like, well, hey Brandon and I, we have the same goal. Mm. the The difference is what's our process, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. What are we committed to? So yeah, I think I when I've been successful, it's sticking to that and knowing like I need to get my butt up to bed mm -hmm. <laughs> um, because if I watch that extra show or I stay later hanging with friends till 10 30 11 I'm just I'm, I'm gonna be I'm not gonna get the morning routine and probably won't it's less of the routine it's that I'm gonna be off when it comes to making big decisions mm, mm, mm. and then what does that do for you when you think about all right I get more sleep if I'm, you know, showing up as my best self. Um, how does that not only impact you, but impact those around you and impact the the goals that you have in front of in front of yourself moving forward as well? Yeah, I mean it it uh it probably makes things easier on, on our teammates. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, Brandy is not here, but she had told me a week ago that launching the newsletter tomorrow was not a good idea. <laughs> you didn't tell us that part. Yeah, <laughs> no, she didn't say that. Brandy knows how to, I'll yeah. quote, manage me really well. Yeah. She Sorry. just says, is that the best idea before you leave? Mm -hmm. And I realize now that I went into athlete mode mm. of like, oh, yeah, which part of my other counterproductive behavior is proving. Mm. You know, because I've been I've been doubted a lot from growing up and mm. being undersized and a lot of those things mm. is I was always used to being like, I don't know if you belong here. Mm. And so my defense mechanism is, all right, I'll prove to you. Mm. I will outwork every person here. Mm. Right. You can hear even my get entered like, yeah, but yeah. that's not me. That's mm. this like other gear that if that gets overcooked, um, it's, you know, it's not ideal to me. Mm. Because now I'm not paying attention to myself. Yeah, yeah. No, I love it. I love it. One last thing I want to ask as well. So, you know, life is all about decisions, right? So every time we decide to do one thing, we're telling something else no, right? So when you think about that and you think about your journey where you are right now, how, how do you go about prioritizing um, when it comes to these goals and the things that you have in mind that you want to get done? Uh, when it comes to, hey, whether I should go to bed or not, right? Like, how do you go about prioritizing, and uh, and how does that play out in, in, typically with you? Well, I think sometimes when I create the right boundaries, like, I'm not a big TV person, but if I get, I've been watching, you know, an Apple Plus show called The Morning Show, and, it's, it's good show. like, <laughs> one of those, it is like, you know, I've never done crack, but, yeah. you know, if, it's like, oh my, I got to watch it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they auto, and you, you see how the, our society is built around kind of just being in front of screens. Mm. And so I'm learning that sometimes there's willpower that maybe the, the thing to do is for four days a week, 
or fi- like the TV's unplugged. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, so if I create more friction, that's when I've done well. Mm. Like when I don't bring the phone in because the hardest thing I have is getting up to bed. Mm. Mm. It is. And I wonder sometimes too, though, what is it that I'm craving mm. or needing, mm. or did I not create enough space for myself? So I'm actually, I'm needing that hour mm. or let me just go check out. Cause my mind's been racing about stuff. So that, that's part of what I'm exploring is what is it that that show is, is giving me and how do I create, how do I put some, A, some boundaries around it? Mm. You know, one friend said, only watch half a show or watch half a show and then, you know, watch the next one. So that way you're not to the, but that's hard that's too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, <laughs> so I, I, I'm just, I'm struck with, I'm not sure I'm the kind of person because I'm a very curious person that mm-hmm. that's a good success for me. Like, so mm. what is, maybe there's days I slot, like, hey, this is movie night. I got two of them. Mm. And the other nights, the TV's unplugged because I, I, can't, I can't sit back and do that. So, mm. yeah. Mm. I don't know if that makes sense. Understood. Understood. So when you think about this space where you are right now, I guess how often, how long has this been something that you've battled with when it comes to allowing sleep to kind of, leak into your day and, and, and mess up kind of where you're striving to get to? So it's like a hit or miss. Mm-hmm. Um, there's times where I'm like really good about it. It's tight. And then, and then I fall off the wagon. Yeah. yeah. So in those moments when you did well with it, uh-huh. what, what was going on in those, those moments in your life? And why was it so important for you to get to bed then and not, not at other times? I can tell you right away. If, I think now because I'm in a, I'm doing a lot of more creative work, mm-hmm. which is related to me. If like I had a coaching session or facilitation session and I knew I had to be somewhere at like eight, I knew I had to be ready and well mm. for that because mm-hmm. I was, someone was depending upon me. It mm. was much easier for me to get to bed. Mm. Mm. And so if it's related to stuff, that's just John writing a book mm. John doing this, um, I'm much more wishy-washy. Mm, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. So with, with that understanding, what would you say would be a, a good next step, right? We, we, you know, the best way to eat an elephant, one bite at a time, right? So when we think about this, this thing that we're working through, what would you see as a, 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 a positive next step to move you in the right direction as far as being more consistent in this space? You know, it takes me back to something that I remember. It's, it was a great book called The Four Tendencies, and this was helpful. And I fall into, there's tendencies around internal and external expectations. And I fall into what they call an obliger, which is where mm. I'm really good at external expectations, not as good as my own ones. Mm. So the way I can solve for that is, is through accountability. Mm. Because like this morning, I would never get up to play tennis, but I was meeting a guy there for a lesson. Mm-hmm. So... Heck yeah, I was there at 7.30. (laughs) (laughs) And that works. So I wonder how I can create some fun accountability structures Mm because too much feels like I'm forcing it Mm -hmm. and it feels like I'm taking my personal freedom away. Mm -hmm. But I just wonder how do I replicate that because it doesn't seem to work even if I tell a friend like, hey, I'm going to get you that document. Well, then I renegotiate it, (laughs) you know? (laughs) I don't, um, um, how do I create fun and good practices mm. towards those things, mm. like being on a team. Like yeah. I can do it if I'm on a team. Yeah. But right now, some of the things I'm doing are more individual focused. Yeah, yeah. No, I think that's a great point. Um, and then I guess last thing, when you think about the importance of getting up early, going to bed on time, and the impact that that can have. Why are some of those things and, and the things that you're working towards, like some of these goals, like this this podcast, uh, the newsletter, and different things of that nature? When you think about showing up as your best self for those, why are those things important to you in the first place? And what what impact are those things going to have um, if if done correctly? Mm. Yeah, it just occurred to me that one of the action steps could be creating like a couple questions, <laughs> mm. like instead of. I just thought the video from the event was so good. Mm-hmm. And I, that was definitely an emotional decision mm. where I didn't 
think through, is this needed? Mm -hmm. What's the return on this? Mm -hmm. What might occur to me if I don't let it go? Mm. And last night, I finally hit me that I've got to let go. The newsletter does not need to go out. Mm. And there was this weight Mm. off (laughs) my back. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so the cost is that I'm getting ready to go the Paris and like I, this happens all the time. I go on vacations and I show up to places and I'm exhausted because mm. like leaving town was crazy because mm. it's saying yes. And I made some progress. Someone asked to interview me for this, you know, coffee shop thing they're doing and they wanted it. They called two days in advance and I said, I just, I can't. Mm. I cannot give that. My focus right now is making sure that this, this podcast is excellent and mm. it's consistent. Mm. So that helped me. Mm. But um, I think another practice is, you've shared this with me, Brandon and Shivani, too, is just sleeping on it. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Mm. Sorry. Um, and maybe something knowing, like, not to make any important decisions, like, in the afternoon or night. Because mm. I, I tend to be tired then, and that's when I sort of just say, oh, I'll figure this out. Mm. And I remember asking... LP7, one of the artists, if she wanted to help with the video, and she was very clear. She's like, I'm fully committed Monday and Tuesday. Mm. And she was producing songs. Mm-hmm. So that was like, whoa, I can actually say to myself, <laughs> I'm already fully committed. Mm. Yeah. And that's so foreign to me. Mm. Mm. No, I love that. Love that. So when you mentioned the question is the last thing, I guess, what, what does that look like for you? When you think about coming up with questions uh, that could help you in those situations, I guess, what does that look like? What does the ideal scenario look like for you uh, moving forward? Yeah, I would say, does, can this happen now or later? Mm-hmm. I'm writing these down. Mm-hmm. If, you're, if you're watching, if you're audio. <laughs> I love to take, development happening. I love uh, black wing pencils, too, <laughs> and soft paper. This is a journal that Brian Collier told me about. Okay, <laughs> I'll stop. I think what's the, what's the cost, too? Mm-hmm of adding that in now Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and when can it be when can it can it be paced further out Mm -hmm. and then a big one (laughs) am i rested right now Mm. am i am i in a really good place to make a pretty strict and and do i have the other the last one is do i have experience in this Mm. so splicing videos on imovie Nope. (laughs) (laughs) Definitely not. (laughs) And it was painful. (laughs) Painful. I was going, let me go to the coffee shop. There's like 10 more. It's Mm. so good, though. Mm. And so I think learning that if the help and support I probably usually would get is booked up for the deadline, I got to stop saying it has to be me then. Mm. Mm. The answer is probably I need... I need to pace this, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. or there's a third way. Love it, love it. So yeah. moving forward, when asked to do something, when you know considering things, when prioritizing, you're gonna use that list of questions, yeah. to kind of help you with your decision, decision That's making good. process, and good. and ping one of these these two as yeah. well. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, definitely. yeah, definitely. Well. That's great. That's so, good. Yeah, so. <laughs> Who else? <laughs> well, I'm curious what you <laughs> all. Not to ask that. more, but just like. Is there a version of that for you? Um, Man, certainly. I think the the idea of focusing and, and not always saying yes and always agreeing to things because it feels good or mm-hmm. it feels important in the moment um, is not something I always struggle with. Right? Someone mm-hmm. says, hey, we have this problem. This kid has this going on. Like, yes, let's take, figure this out. And mm-hmm. not just for this kid. Let's figure it out for more kids. Mm-hmm. Um, and it all feels really important. And it feels like it's on my shoulders or I put them on my shoulders to solve that problem. Mm -hmm. Whereas sometimes remembering that there is an entire team who could also be thinking about these problems and to share some of that wealth is really important. Um, But knowing how to say no and not fearing that that's the no that could have opened a door for you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. That's it. it. (laughs) Or could have done something important. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. is hard. And then amongst uh, all of that, then saying like, well, I, all these things feel really important, but my family is also really important. And yeah, how do yeah. I not take away from that um, yeah. in my mm-hmm. own self? Yeah, no, I love it. Uh, to that, I'd ask, uh, I guess, when has saying no 
like gone wrong for you? <laughs> uh, without giving too many details. <laughs> <laughs> so I, you know, I've I've said yes to something. Mm-hmm. Sorry, one has saying no gone gone wrong. Mm-hmm. I um, you know, I, I had the opportunity to maybe like write a book for a medical chapter of some sort, and mm-hmm. while it's not something that was at all exciting or interesting for me, <laughs> I'm learning now that that has value in professional development, mm-hmm. right? Having your name attached to something like that is mm-hmm. important. And without those check boxes checked off, it's really hard to advance in, in my profession. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But it's not something at all that I have any interest or passion in. I don't want to sit and write journal articles or chapters. It's not something that brings me any joy or value, yeah. but I'm trying to learn how I can mesh the things that I am interested in into that value structure that exists within yeah. my system. No, I love it. How, and how do you go about making that decision when it's something that's not tied to my passion, not tied to my gifts and my skills, but it's something that's tied to my role and the growth that I want to see? Like, how do you decide whether, hey, this is something I just got to suck it up and do, or I'm not doing this? Like when you said no, I guess, how do you make that decision? Yeah, I think, you know, early on, I think I was told you got to say a couple of yeses in order to start getting your foot in the door. Mm-hmm. And I feel like I said enough yeses to at least have you know, my name known Mm -hmm. to be able to be something that or to move a a little bit of work, but it's still not, it's still not the checks and balances, right? It's not the, Mm -hmm. uh, the things that people normally would put on their CV in my stage of the career. And so I I struggle with it because it's not something that I want to spend my time doing and I'm already stretched so Mm -hmm. far Yeah, Um, Yeah. that to say no to something that I'm really passionate about is really hard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Love it. Love it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I have a similar, similar issue with saying no. Um, but I think what also is paired with it, which is something, Siobhan, you mentioned towards the end, is it's mixed with a FOMO, a fear of missing mm-hmm. out. And so it's like, yeah, I could say no, but that looks so interesting. I want to do it anyway. I feel <laughs> like I can do and I can do all this. Like, go back to your point of just going into hyperdrive. Um, so I think that's something that I'm wrestling with is like, it's okay to just let that go off and, you know, maybe it circle backs and I get involved in some aspect of it down the, down the road. It's very exciting. I don't want to say no, but it's less people pleasing. I think mm-hmm. that the more I evaluate it and more of like, I don't want to miss out on that opportunity. Like you're saying, I don't know, not necessarily this may turn into something, but it's exciting at the very least. And so being more cognizant about it's okay for that thing to go off and grow without, mm-hmm. without me being involved. Right. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. yeah. And I think that sometimes there's a level of urgency, right? Like yeah. When I see what other people are doing and I'm like, Oh, that yeah. looks so exciting. And then I have to think to myself, like they've been doing this for way longer <laughs> right. than I have. Like, I don't need to be at their level. They yeah, don't have right. little children running around at home anymore. They've got older yeah. grown children. They can probably spare a little bit more time. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And when you think about yeah. FOMO, right? The fear yeah. of missing out for both of you, when it comes to the, the book opportunity and then for you saying mm-hmm. no as well, how much of an impact, how much different would you would your journey have been right now if you said yes in those moments, right? And and a lot of I guess answer that question for me first. Like what did you what did moments, you really miss out yeah, on? Yeah, the moments that I thought probably probably not. I, I did I didn't notice at the time, mm-hmm. but I notice it now that I am feeling much more settled. I'm able to balance a lot more things. I'm I I I, I very thoughtful about what I choose. Mm. And so I think I actually didn't miss out on anything mm. if I would, you know, by saying no. I mm. think actually it probably freed me up to do the things that I said yes to a lot mm. better. And one of the things kind of the the hybrid or in between I'm f- figuring out is I can say no, mm. but I can share that with someone else who doesn't have the opportunity. And I feel like I'm somewhat connected to that. Mm-hmm. And so it's still like, well, at least I know someone else is getting this great opportunity to do this, and and I can hear about the great stories that are going out of that. So that's mm-hmm. kind of where I landed. But to answer your question, wasn't really giving up much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah. Well, that I love you. I said that that that's like a huge insight for me. What you when you said that, Shivani, of mm-hmm. of the, you know, what what might I miss? Mm-hmm. Or that's the same process when someone mentioned you want to be in this video and it was like two days notice and I wrote down if I'm not careful I'll be searching for the constant big break Mm. and that's not why we're doing this Mm. right right? Mm. we're doing this for this right Mm. we're doing this for it's a beautiful day and I get Mm. to come hang out (laughs) with two of my best friends and talk to you Nate Mm -hmm. and record and 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 this right and that I just I'm I'm learning that I've got to be careful to not 
I used to say to myself a lot, no shortcuts. Mm -hmm. And I want to bring that back into my world because there aren't any shortcuts, right, to, to doing great things. And the video that was great from Friday, like, oh, yeah, this could be this could be a big break. Someone could see this and then something could happen. And you know what? I think the opportunities will open up when I and we are ready. Mm. And when we're when we've shown when we put that work in and mm. commitment. So I'm just reminding myself that there are no shortcuts. Yeah. And if you're searching, I say if I if I'm constantly searching for that big break, I will say yes to all those random things versus like, hey, we're recording this week. Mm. We're working on a book. We're working on writing. Like it's already happening, right? Mm. It happens if you stick to those things. So thank you for saying that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think and those are powerful points. Um, and the reason why I ask those questions is because we often fear things that would never happen in our lives, right? That's true. <laughs> you know, I fear I'm missing out on something. It has had no impact on the journey that you've That's had right. and you being the man mm -hmm. that you are right now. Same thing for you, Shivani. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the times we get these things in our mind. But the one thing that I want to encourage you all to do moving forward is, is, is to continue trusting that instinct, right? You had that instinct in you that, like, oh, that's, that's probably not for me, right? right? That's there for a reason. We have to learn to trust that and to honor that, right? Mm -hmm. uh, same thing for you. So I just encourage us as leaders to do that. And I know for me, as a coach, sometimes you have to pull back on instincts sometimes because we want to be able to just throw out the answers, right? So. Right. You know, I had some ideas in my mind yeah. of what, what I could have thrown at John. Hey, man, maybe if you did this, maybe if you did that. <laughs> right. But I have to hold back because ultimately I recently read, and it's something that I firmly believe in, I, I constantly am trying to remind myself of is he can come up with better answers for his solutions than I ever can, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, it's, and, it, and it's my job to help him arrive at that point, right, yeah. of where he – comes up with this idea that he that he understands the way he operates. And hey, with, with how I'm operating and where I've done the best in the past, this is something I think will definitely work for me. Yeah. That'll be 10 times better than anything I can throw on this plate, right? right. Mm -hmm. um, so that's something that I constantly have to challenge myself as someone who wants to serve and help, but also just taking a, a back mm -hmm. seat in, the, in, the, in those client conversations and really being in tune with that individual, what they're saying, and helping to pull those things out of them, because uh, that's when they're more likely to uh, complete the action item that we place in front of them. Mm. So uh, that's a big piece is, you know, trusting my instinct, but in that situation, I have to trust John's instinct, mm. right? Okay. <laughs> I have to be one with John in that moment, <laughs> right? a lot of trust. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did, my album is coming out, <laughs> so a lot of trust. No, well, it does, and, and I think, trusting yourself right like yeah. you've said like trusting yourself that the right answer will will emerge and you know as we as we're wrapping up today yeah. you know i'd love to hear from our team here just you know what you're taking away and uh and then nate would love to give you the last word and and, and let people know when, before we get to that like yeah. where can people find you like how do they work with you like how does that how does that work like yeah. how do they contact you perfect they can contact me on my website it's uh www.audiblecoachingandconsulting.com um, i'm on social media all social media outlets at, at the audible coach um and you know that's that's the easiest way to find me uh so you can go on my website i have an email list as well where i send out uh inspirational and motivational messages hmm. um i call audible minute mondays i send out um a video that is uh, inspirational on, on mondays and then i send out a thursday inspiration which is typically a quote with some you know thoughts tied to it as well just to kind of keep people encouraged and inspired uh, so that's a way to keep in touch with me. And um, if you ever want to work with me, my contact, my contact information is on my website. Uh, you can contact me through social media as well. Uh, direct message me. I would love to speak uh, with you about whatever uh, the area is in your life where you're feeling like there's a gap, right? And you want to fill that gap. I want to be able to support, encourage, and help hold you accountable uh, as we walk alongside one another um, on your journey. So that's the, that's the ultimate goal. And uh, yeah, look forward to hearing from you at some point. Love that. And we'll yeah. put all your info in the show notes so people can get that. So yeah. how about y'all? Yeah, I so first the first takeaway is that I think it this is consistent with other episodes we had in the past. People should feel comfortable in seeking help and just ways to improve and get better mm -hmm. personally. Mm -hmm. And whether that's consulting, whether it's coaching, you can always there's always something you learn. The second takeaway I'm glad I, I sort of figured out what Nate was doing like towards halfway through. I was like, man, he's asking a lot of questions. But, <laughs> but then I kept seeing John like right and mm. he was coming up with answers himself. And mm. like, yeah, I could tell you were like prompting questions mm. for him to 
figure out which direct, which fork in the road he was going to take. Mm-hmm. Um, and so what I took away from that, I, first of all, I think just shows the value of you as executive coach that mm-hmm. you didn't, and it, and it speaks to the naming of audible coaching. Mm-hmm. You didn't just come in with a plan and this mm-hmm. is what I do. If a person says they're fear of missing out, this mm-hmm. is what the plan will be. <laughs> this, you go down this route for that. But you regularly said, okay, John's going down this. Let's see where he goes. Mm-hmm. And so I thought that was powerful. And then I just think this listening. Mm. Like we don't listen to en- to people enough. Like yeah. really what they're saying, not what I want to tell you, but just listening to what they're saying. So yeah. that's what I took away. Mm. Yeah. And that's a leadership gift too, to be able uh-huh. to listen to people. For sure. Genuinely. For sure. Um, and yeah, I really just enjoyed watching that process unfold yeah. as well. Just kind of hearing all the questions and you, you never really even answer. You just yeah, right, right, <laughs> you figure it out. It and it helps me realize that right. oftentimes we, we do know the answers. Mm-hmm. We do have it inside of us at some point. We just need the right person to help us draw it out of ourselves mm-hmm. and, and have the confidence to say it out loud and, um, and go through that journey and that process um, yeah. with someone um, who's really good at listening and really yeah. thinking and um, responding in a way that's truly getting at your core values and your and your principles as well. So I appreciated that. Um, um, and really the idea of, tr- of trusting, mm-hmm. trusting yourself, trusting um, a person with your um, inner thoughts and fears and, and feelings, um, mm-hmm. but also just trusting your own instinct and saying, okay, I, I think I know what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I can do this. Love yeah. It. I love that. Well, and I was just laughing because I, I was I was uh, trying to wait you both out to say, "Oh yeah, but what do y'all go today?" And then both <laughs> y'all like turned away, and I was like, "Dang, <laughs> did they plan this?" Yeah. <laughs> um, but no, I'm I'm struck too that that we learn so much too. We say a lot here that we're we're just revealing what's already there. We're learning in community you know, you working with me, but then Shivani, you sharing something like, I, I think that's the beauty of when you are with people. It's like, Oh, Hey, what's my version of that? I, Oh gosh, I do that too. Mm-hmm. And that, uh, having people to navigate this with is, is what it's all part of. And, and like you said, Nate, I think that's what you do so well. And I recommend to anyone who's selecting a coach, there's a lot of people that do different types and things out mm-hmm. there. But the first thing is like, find someone who really honors you know has high character Mm. and i think that's pretty important and uh, you know that's one of the reasons i've worked with you and called you in that (laughs) in that quandary so um (laughs) man thank you so much again and just anything you want to say today you know i guess uh as what you got out of today and close us in like 60 seconds or so what you what you feeling yeah just thank y'all again for this opportunity um to be able to kind of share in this way Uh, i've never done this before (laughs) um, but this has been awesome Uh, and i just want to share also so you know it's not a coaching session if there aren't action items so we had we're not walking out the door without something that we're working towards Mm -hmm. and in that scenario the goal would have been either we keep track of how often we, we don't honor that over the next month or however many you know uh, weeks or days are going to be in between sessions. But I just want to make that clear that there there are always action out of it or else it's not a coaching. It's just, it's just a conversation. Mm-hmm. So, But the last thing I wanted to share, something that you touched on, Brandon, I think that is very important for everyone to understand is that you are not alone. Like, you know, it's a very vulnerable place to be when we feel like we're on an island, when we feel like we're by ourselves. Um, we are always better together, right? And I don't know why this has been hitting me recently. Uh, and it's something random. It may not make sense to some, but one plus one is two, but one and one is 11. Like, you, it, mm. either way, we're, we're, we're greater together, right? Mm. And I think mm. that it's something that we all need to kind of embrace. Um, and, and, and a lot of times it's pride that gets in the way or, hey, I'm too cool for this, or people may think I'm weak, whatever the case may be, we all need support. Um, as a coach, I have people that coach me, I have mentors that, that pour into me, and I have mm. the same thing that I'm doing for those that are coming up under me as well. So I just wanna encourage people, you know, we don't we don't have to go through this, this life alone, right? You're not alone, you're not on an island, especially in this season of life that we're all in and fighting through right now. It's very easy to feel like you're isolated, you know, and you're quarantined in your life. You know what I mean? Mm. It feels that way sometimes. You don't have to feel that way. You can reach out to someone like John, like myself, anyone, whether it's a close friend, family member, someone that believes in you, someone that loves you, has high character, and wants what's best for you, right? And sees things in you that you may not even see in yourself. Um, That's the type of people you want to surround yourself with uh, that can help to continue helping you grow and develop and becoming the full version of yourself and living the fulfilled life that you deserve. So 
Yeah. You know. I know that was more than 60 seconds. I'm hey, sorry, man. That's good, baby. <laughs> I love it. Awesome. Worth every second. A lot of dimes in there. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Nick. We invite you to continue making room with us. You'll find this episode and all of our exciting and meaningful conversations on Apple, Spotify, or really anywhere you choose to listen to podcasts. Join the Making Room movement and get more info at makingroomwithus.com or follow us on Instagram at Making Room With Us. Thank you for showing up for us and each other. Until next time. You are wonderful and full of truth. Just a- Just as you are